you lucky lot out there today are going to um, get both of us and what I've decided to do is quite a few people have been asking Wendy some questions so I thought I would ask Wendy the questions and she could answer them to you guys out there because you're the ones who've been asking the questions. How does that sound? It sounds fabulous like Sunday night with the wives. <laughs> Sunday night with the wives, yes, great. So the first question that you've been asked, Wendy, is how do you feel after retiring from competing? I actually feel better than what I thought I would. In what way? Because I think obviously the injury was a bit of a, it was something that made me realise how important it was to keep looking after my health and I don't want to end up like worse than what I am so I want to be able to maintain training and live a healthy lifestyle and if I carried on competing and putting my body through the mill so to speak then I think I would have suffered even more so that was quite a deciding factor but also what made me kind of accept it so, so, so to speak more was just the way the sport's going it makes me feel more like I've made the right decision mm -hmm. does that make sense so like the way that the I'm not going to say the politics word because that's just you've just said it I've just said it okay sorry <laughs> yeah but the, the direction that female bodybuilding's going I don't like it and I didn't really and even now I don't really want to be a part of that anymore um, and I'm not bitter in any way and I always love bodybuilding I always will but just the actual competitive side I mean you've seen it as well mm -hmm. um, I don't want to be like that anymore and that's kind of reassured my decision to retire good so and, I, and I think that's um, you have made the right because it's against my my values what how it how it's going mm -hmm. and we're all about values aren't we yeah we, we love are. a good value <laughs> uh, the next question that you asked was um, Oh, can you eat normal now? <laughs> I could answer this. Right, okay, this makes me giggle. And it used to, I used to get asked this after every competition. I, and my mum used to do it as well. And she said, oh, Petch, does that mean you can eat normal now after a competition? Well, normal to me is how I've eaten for the past 20 odd years. And I think that means normal for a, um, a non-bodybuilder. Like, like your, your mum, you mean? So you're talking <laughs> about people who, um, normal, when people ask that question, normal, what they mean is that you would eat, you know, pie, peas and chips. And you soup. Would go, you would go out to the pub and, and um, you know, have bar meals, go to McDonald's, eat normal food during the day, as in, you know, maybe, I don't know, mashed potato, spaghetti, beans on toast, all that sort of stuff that I, I guess people class that as normal yeah, i don't know because we we eat different yeah always. that's not normal to me and my normal is different to uh, the normal person's <laughs> normal <laughs> what is normal what's normal you tell us what is normal to you but to us normal is you know we eat every three hours yeah and we have done for 10 years and every three hours and we have porridge and we just have a, a real yeah, good diet don't we of healthy food yeah and i'd say even more so now because i was quite rigid in the chicken rice and broccoli thinking um <laughs> every day but what are you laughing at are <laughs> you rigid thinking i i still am rigid thinking i know but i've tried to open my horizons on the colorful vegetables that are available <laughs> now well i'm saying now there's a bit of a um, it's a bit of a mad rush for food now but yeah, so my normal is eating every two to three hours, or two and a half hours, certain times a day, certain food group. Um, and yes, I'm a, I'm a bit more liberal now, as in the fact that we actually went to the pub last night, and we had burger, but... Yeah, but she didn't eat the chips. But I had double burger. Just double burger. <laughs> and I didn't even have your chips, did I? No, I just and have mine. she didn't even... Oh, you did give me a bit of your burger. <laughs> <laughs> Normally there's a trade-off. I swap a bit of her burger for my chips. But I just had my own. Because I'm not greedy. So yes, so normal to Sorry, you is... Yeah. So normal to me is, how, as I've always eaten, so I will always eat healthy, protein... Clean food. Clean food every two and a half hours. Seven days a week. And one night a week, I will have a cheap 
Me like last night's burger. And tonight we're having ice cream. And tonight we're having ice cream. Can't wait for nine o'clock. Nine o'clock ice cream. Nine o'clock ice cream night. <laughs> so the next question was, um, what is the biggest influencing, or oh, sorry, what was the biggest factor influencing your positive outlook once you've um, you finished competing, I suppose? Um, my, I, everything boils down to mindset. Um, so if you if I want to look at it and say, oh, I've finished competing now, it's going to be really hard to adjust. I'm never going to get that buzz again. Well, no, I, I won't get that buzz again, and I never will. But at least I've I can keep the memories and remember it. But there's other things to look forward to now, and rather than dwelling on what I can't have, I'm trying to focus on what I can do now and, and pass on to my clients and other people who want to benefit from, from my experience and, um, and knowledge. So I'm trying to focus on that. And yes, sometimes it, it does still, it doesn't upset me, but I, sometimes I think, oh, I, I, I used to love doing this and I'll miss the girls, like my friends who I used to compete with. But guess what? We still keep in touch. And we have probably a better relationship now without the stresses of competing against each other. Um, so, but it's all about mindset because if I was to think negative and, like I said, dwell on what I can't have, and now I focus what I can have, and it's kind of nice. And I think you're a bit like mindset's Kay's thing. So she's helped me a lot in in this type of thing. So, what do you think? Well, everything. Begins with a thought, doesn't it? Yeah. And you know, you can worry about the past, you can worry about the future, but all you have is this present moment because you can't change the past. We haven't really got any control over the future, but we can always control what we do here and now, how we behave here and now, and how we think. Yeah, and I always remember you saying what sticks in is quite a simple thing is you've got. A choice you always you always choose what you think so you either choose to dwell or you choose to move forward well the the, the same opportunities will um, come before you make every single day mm -hmm. but it's how we look at those um, opportunities and how we respond to them because they're all there for each of us but it depends how you want to respond to, to those opportunities you can see them as good see them as bad you can see them as you know, great, you can see them as negative, it's, it's, you know, the choice is down to you. So if you want to choose to be happy, that's brilliant, you make those right choices, you can still, so if, as an example, I, I'm choosing to go to the gym, I'm choosing to see how I can keep my body in condition and be healthy without the stresses of competitive bodybuilding, um, or I can choose to maybe, oh, I don't want to go to the gym because what's the point? Uh, I'm not competing now, why be healthy? Well, I'm choosing to be healthy, I'm choosing to live that positive, healthy lifestyle. So, and I look at it each, I'm learning new things, there's more opportunities out there, and I've got more time to do other things. Um, and more, the best thing for me is more energy. I've got more life now, I've got more energy to do things. Um, do you That's because you're stealing my energy. Well, we can steal each other's. <laughs> <laughs> but being around positive people, yeah, like, I can't stand being around negative people. I'll abide them for so long, and it's like the three strikes and you out will see you. But if, if I'm around people who lift me up and like valued people, yeah, if I'm around like valued people, it makes me happy. It makes me want to be around them more. But if you hear people, don't get me wrong, Everyone's got stresses, and I'm not saying we don't get down and stuff, but if you find, find a way to try and deal with them stresses and you still remain upbeat, and then for people who just dwell on them constantly, I don't want to be around those people because they bring you down, don't they? Like, they give off this negative vibe, and you can tell who they are, um, but I don't want to spend my time around them. I'd rather be around positive, happy people. And the thing is, you know, life isn't always happy. No. It isn't always positive. And, you know, we're not saying that everybody is happy 24 hours of the day, but you always have a choice. And you can have a choice that, you know, you might see something and think, 
you know, it's really, really bad and you start overthinking it and letting the thoughts stay in your head over and over again and dwelling on them, then you catastrophize, then you overthink things and you just, it's just a pattern of behavior. So you need to be able to change that pattern of behavior and look at things in a, in a different way. You know, ask yourself what somebody else would maybe, um, you know, think of the situation, try and find a different way to look at it that would probably have a more positive outcome. Don't know. Anyway. Anyway. That's the wives yes. for you. That's the wives for you. I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope that Wendy's answered the questions for the people who sent them in. So if you've got any more questions, send them back in to, or DM me on Instagram or on Facebook and in inbox me and um, I'll try and answer you some more. Okay? So that's it from the wives. From the wives. Bye. See ya.